Let us prepare our hearts and minds to begin our service of worship. quite a bit out there in the narthex. A list of what is needed is on the announcement insert. Please get everything in by August 14th. Today, our first hymn, which will be in Sing the Faith songbook. So, please join me now to our call of worship. If you would please stand. We are here, Lord, your people, your church, gathering together in your presence. We are open to each other, and we are open to you. Today, make yourself known to us through our worship. Our prayer and our understanding of your word. Please join in the singing of page 2202 and sing the faith. Come away with me.
short of God's ideal for our lives. Let us confess our sin to God now, trusting in God's grace revealed in Jesus Christ. Heavenly Creator, forgive us when we focus on earthly accumulation rather than on spiritual fruitfulness. Forgive us when we are overcome by greed and neglect the needs of those around us. Forgive us when we turn inward and shirk the responsibilities of community. We seek renewal and new life in you. Forgive us as we now confess our most personal sin to you alone in silence. Amen. In Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven, and God has given us new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 6, verse 31. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. Holy wisdom, holy word. In the beginning of Mark chapter 6, we learn about Jesus' travels and teachings. We know he visits his hometown, and we learn about the commissioning of the 12 disciples. We found out that they were told they couldn't take anything with them except a staff. What would it look like for us to go on a vacation or a journey with nothing but a walking stick? This might be okay if you were going hiking, but what would we do when we got thirsty or hungry? No money for food or water, no money for a hotel. 
The disciples went from city to city, spreading the word and anointing the sick. And Jesus knew that his disciples were weary and tired. The disciples didn't even have time to eat. They were constantly praying over someone or providing what we call pastoral or Christian care. Jesus saw their struggles. He saw that they were ne neglecting their basic needs. And this is when he instructed them in Mark chapter 6, verse 31, to come by themselves to a desolate place to rest and eat. When my children were younger, I never really thought about self-care. Actually, I don't even think it was a term I had ever heard. Taking time for myself didn't feel right to me, and I actually felt guilty when I would go out with friends or venture to the store by myself. I reflect now and often wonder if I would have been a better mom, or at least a more patient mom, if I would have taken time for myself. When I became an advocate, self-care was something that my manager really encouraged. She would say to us, you can't give to others if your cup is empty. And in turn, that always resulted in conversations of how to fill our empty cups. We were, this can be hard as we live in a time where we are always giving. We work, we volunteer our time, we parent, we're active in our church, and then we have people who rely on us. People who need our help, or a project that needs started, or a community meal that needs prepared. We give, and we give, and we give. But if we keep giving without taking care of ourselves, we will burn out. This is when I rekindled my enjoyment of coloring. Thankfully, adult coloring workbooks had become popular. I found this to be a good way to escape and found it very relaxing. This activity opened the door to Bible journaling. And because my love for Bible journaling had grown, it allowed me to become more comfortable with the Bible. Even Jesus practiced self-care. In Luke chapter 5, verse 16, it says, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. Jesus was always being called upon. He was teaching, praying with people, and healing the sick. And withdrawing to the wilderness was Jesus' way of filling his cup, being intentional in his spirituality and prayer. There are many scripture readings that talk of Sabbath and resting. And I believe that is because Jesus knew the demands of ministry and everyday life. He also understood the importance of removing distractions so that he could effectively renew his mind and his spirit. You might wonder why self-care is important. According to an article by the National Institute of Mental Health, Self-care can help you manage stress, lower your risk of illness, and increase your energy. And those that practice self-care are able to reduce stress, manage their anxiety, increase happiness, and sleep better. But what happens if you don't practice self-care? You may experience fatigue, have a hard time concentrating, or make mistakes. In my case, I am quick to lash out at someone or I get really tired, sometimes both. I'm getting better at recognizing this and I try to really hard to be aware so that I can rest before I get to that point. In today's first scripture reading, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
According to the Life Application Bible, God is offering us rest from the Pharisees and teachers of the law and the extra rules that we try to add to our faith today. It is easy to get swooped up into the daily grind of life. How often do we bend to society norms instead of what we would like to do? It's okay to leave a sink full of dirty dishes and take the dog to the park. Or to use paper plates for dinner so that you have extra time to spend with kids and family. What about in our church life? I've noticed that us Presbyterians, and I use that term endearingly, like to throw committee, committees at everything. But just because we have a committee doesn't mean we have to always have meetings. If there is no need for a meeting or nothing new to discuss, it's okay to skip a month or gasp, take the summer off. It's important that we are intentional in how we spend our time and how we ask others to spend theirs. Romans chapters 12 verses 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, my mercies of God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God wants us to have renewed minds, living to honor and obey him and to serve others. And we can accomplish this by our intentional changing the way we think, by aligning our thoughts with God's word. Without a renewed mind, it is easy for us to live our lives based on our experiences, trauma, and the opinions of others affecting how we react and think. If we allow ourselves to get burned out, then our mind focus on the ways of the world and not on God. It is important for us to have a renewed mind so that we are able to think clearly and remember how God wants to us to live our lives and to react to things. Everyone needs renewal and self-care. It's important for us to be aware of our minds and bodies. I challenge you to be aware of what your body is telling you. Know when you need to take time for yourself and renew your spirit. Think of three things that make you happy and use them for self-care. This could be coloring, Bible journaling, or bird watching. I am giving you permission to allow time for yourself. Please stand and join me for hymn number 12, O Day of Rest and Gladness.
for our prayer of the people. Just bear with me because I don't know everybody's names. So, um, do we have any reflections or prayers that we would like to lift up to the Lord today? Prayers for Fox Goodman family uh, and the loss of the e Fox and his family here. So, we really appreciate that they're able to be here with us and be filled with God's love. Thank you, Donna. Patty? I have a blessing. Today is my son Bill's birthday, so um, please bless him for another year. Birthday blessings, that's lovely. Yes? A prayer for my great granddaughter who got bitten um, in the mouth with a, a dog and had 14 stitches. Eight oh, years old. Oh, my goodness. Right. Any other prayers or joys that we want to? Well, we continue to pray for our pastor and his family on sabbatical, and um, hope he is being renewed, as you explained. You know, church life is busy, and we're so happy he's having this time connecting with them. I think it's also probably a good idea to pray for your session and your worship team yes. as they um, continue to. Uh, direct the church while Alex is on sabbatical. Yes? Prayers for my mom. Um, she's dealing with people vandalizing her house because of all that she made. Any other? Let me keep this coming back here up here. Can you maybe say what, what is Samantha? Can you share with us? I couldn't hear. Oh, prayers for my mom because Any other? Okay, let us pray. Holy God, the world pressures us to accumulate more and more abundance. If only we had more, we believe we would achieve success. We worry about the future. If only we had more, we imagine we could finally relax. Remind us once again that we are your children. You created us in your image and gifted us for community life. You have called us and claimed us as your own. You give our lives meaning and you instill us with value as your people. Remind us, O oh Lord, of this good news. We pray for those who do not know the good news of their own value in your eyes. We pray for those who feel like they are running on a hamster wheel every day, trying to get ahead and making no progress. We pray for those who are trying to prove themselves and constantly feel like they are falling short. We pray for those who are burdened by a false sense of independence, unable to ask for help or to admit frailty. We pray for those who have been victimized by greed and selfishness. For all these people, we ask for the power of your good news to bring new life. You have knit us together into community. In Jesus Christ, we are renewed and the divisions among us are overcome. Teach us the way of interdependence. Grant us generosity to share your resources with one another. Open us to receive the wisdom and gifts of, your, of our siblings in Christ. Clothe us with new life and enable us to live faithfully in this time and place. Hear our prayers, holy God, those spoken among you today and those that we know within our hearts, and respond with your grace. Now we join our voices to pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We share from our abundance so that we might be rich toward God. Let us offer our gifts in worship. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Before I give you the charge of benediction, I would like to say thank you to Donna and Milton Presbyterian Church for inviting me over in the last two weeks. Um, your grace and hospitality have meant the world to me. I am also going to ask that while um, Scott plays the postlude, that we sit in quiet reflection and think about what we have talked about today and how renewal is important in everybody's lives. Go into the world knowing that you are rich in God's eyes and you have been given new life in Jesus Christ. May that good news transform you. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you this day and every day. Amen.